Dean. Uh, our thanks to uh, Zurich, who are the sponsors of the World Cup for another season. That's welcome, because they provide the means by which crews can attend the World, Regatt World Cup regattas and uh, a little bit of other support as well. But it's all grateful as we go off with the World Champions in their traditional blue and white ailings boat. On the far side, on the top of the picture, that's the Italians. Two from the top, that's Germany. One, then Great Britain, Croatia. Three from the bottom of your picture, the Czech Republic in the white boat, two from the bottom of your picture, and closest to you are South Africa. As we go through the first of the four quarters, and here that's the way I like to think about the race. Not so much as a, just a 2,000 meter distance, it's a four quarters and different things happen in different parts. Absolutely. I spoke to Matthew Pinson before this race, and his plan for this race was to get out in front, which he has singularly failed to do so far, and when in front, then set a pace that they would even uh, take each quarter of the race, each 500 meters, e as evenly as possible. They are now being uh, just chasing up on the Italians over on the far side in lane one, uh, with Great Britain, the blue uh, boat there, uh, about two foot behind the Italians. And I think we can expect these, this Italian crew has no record compared to Cracknell and Pinsent, and we can expect the British boat any time now to go through to take an, a lead. Um, but it's not the kind of lead that Matthew and James like. They, lo they want to get in front by a length and then dictate the race from there. Well, there's uh, James on the right. Now, a year ago, Hugh, he had to uh, change the bow side. Not always an easy thing to do. This is the second season, and they have been out together in Duisburg. But how do you think it's going? Oh, I think uh, I spoke to Jürgen about this because uh, he was being asked this question very closely. Jürgen Grobler is the coach who's uh, looked after these two uh, since he came, well, Matthew, since he came to this country in 1990. And James, uh, as he built his uh, career up through the squad, has been uh, under Jürgen as well. And uh, he was asked, because he's the one who made James change a year ago, and uh, he says that it's now bedded in completely. And uh, certainly there are no excuses to be gained uh, from saying that he's changed sides. He looks extremely comfortable and smooth in that way. And certainly uh, most oarsmen who swap back and forth through their career would expect to be uh, quite used to it now. Uh, particularly when you've got a partner as solid uh, in the way that he rows, I don't mean in his body, but uh, you know, as strong and as solid as Matthew, then you can fit in to that rhythm uh, once you've got uh, the very basics of the technique right, and James is well in uh, with that kind of rhythm. Well, the South Africans uh, closest to you at the bottom of the picture, don't worry about them. They generally come with a burst in the second half of the race. They like to just establish their position and then try and challenge. It did take them to a bronze medal a year ago. The other uh, partnership that perhaps is worth keeping an eye on is uh, Detlef Kierkov and Ike Langvoit of Germany, who are just above them. They're, what would they be? They'd be about third now at the moment. Yes, I think they're lying about third, but uh, it's a little bit difficult with the parallax. You've got to take a look at the white boys that are looking from bottom left to top right across your picture there. That's the diagonal line, which is actually uh, tells you where, they, where they're lying. Ike Langvoit, son of uh, one of the uh, uh, the two brothers, Langvoit, that dominated Coxless pairs through the uh, mid and late 70s. Uh, he's, he was um, in a, a different pair last year and finished about seventh when uh, Detlef Kirchhoff, who's been around for years, uh, took a year out after the Olympics to uh, gather his breath and, uh, and, and his desire to start training again. They're just at the top of the picture of the yellow bow ball beyond Pinsent and Cracknell, and I would say that they were holding third from the South Africans in fourth by only the very slimmest of margins. Now, this is a new pair, therefore. Kirchhoff and uh, Langvoid haven't been seen racing in public before for Germany, uh, although they're bound to have raced a lot in training in their squad because the German national squad, um, they've both been core members of it for some years now. Uh, and we're looking forward to seeing how they go this year. Indeed, because Kierkegaard's no stranger to winning because uh, with Sense back in 1998 when the World Championships were in Cologne, they took the gold medal on that uh, occasion. Yes, I mean, Kirchhoff was, uh, was, is one of the last still remaining uh, in rowing who was brought up under the old East German system before unification. Uh, Eike Langvoit was uh, also brought up under that system, but unification happened uh, when he was, uh, you know, an early teenager, and so he's much more used to these, um, uh, to the changes. But but Detlef Kirchhoff has been in the system uh, for all of his life.
Croatia. Well, they haven't uh, managed to emulate their uh, performance at the World Cup over in Japan as they did four years ago. Uh, but uh, they are terrifically enthusiastic in their country for all the sports. I mean, uh, we're coming up to Wimbledon. That's not far away. And who's going to ever remember, ever forget, I should say, Ivan Nisevic's uh, fairy tale victory last year. There's something magic about the Croatians. They do find very good sportsmen and women. Absolutely. Uh, the, the, this pair out of the eight, they are after silver medalists from last year so they're serious players on this stage they're actually smaller than even Isovic <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a curious uh, uh, thing because normally rowers are much bigger than tennis players but it's the other way around in this in this fair and they're moving very nicely lying in second place and I don't think Matthew and James are having um, quite the controlling role that they like to have they're um, batting it along a bit they're not just settling down and uh, holding everybody else at bay without effort so uh, I think these Croatians are doing a certain to racing at the moment and the South Africans just uh, improving their position a little bit they're past the Germans now on the far side who slipped down into probably about fourth place they're gonna have to move as you can see the uh, time is running out as the Brits uh, actually look now for a length of clear water the immensely powerful Matthew Pinson who only likes to do as much as he has to yes Matthew moved the rate up to 39 strokes to the minute there and they have moved out on the other three partly because the South Africans have slipped a bit uh, and, and the Germans haven't come as fast yet but the Germans are beginning to wind it now now this is catch off speciality he'll be pushing at Langvoit in the stroke seat to wind it up and we're getting towards the last part of the race you can see the uh, finished pontoons in the corner of your picture there and it's the Germans who are taking making the pace in this and pushing Pinsent and Cracknell to a harder finish than they want to do Matthew up to 43 strokes the minute now Germans closing on them and they take second place from South Africa in third and push the Croatians who had been second all the way through the race back into fourth well that's a fascinating first World Cup regatta performance of the season for Matthew Pinsent and James Cracknell yes they've got the victory but uh, this is the first I suppose you'd say first public step of the season but there are several steps more to be taken